Hi guys, Robo 46 here. Welcome yourselves back to MotoGP 21 on the Xbox Series X. We're going to be doing a full race distance race around Satsun Ring as Miguel Oliveira, and we will be talking through all the results for Satsun Ring and MotoGP. So if you haven't watched the racing yet, I suggest turning off now because we are going to be going through all three categories. So I'm using Miguel Oliveira because he won at the previous race. I usually record these races on either the Thursday or the Friday before the races. So, uh, yeah, using Oliveira for this one. And, uh, yeah, we're going to start off with Moto3. So, Moto3 is always a fantastic race. Absolutely spot on. Always a fantastic race to open the day with. And um, Satsum Ring was uh, no exception. So, uh, it was a uh, quite a hectic one. I mean, all, all three categories had a lot going on but um yeah moto 3 it was uh riders all over the place you had the the likes of uh toba uh dennis foggia uh jeremy al kobe you had um gabriel rodrigo fighting for the win and you, you had a big pack in the lead for for quite a while pedro costa didn't qualify particularly well but he did start making his way through the pack. In fact, I think by the end of lap one, he managed to get back up to fifth place. So, uh, the young rookie, he's, uh, yeah, he's definitely something else at the moment. So, we had um, a few incidents as well, but we had a few incidents in basically all three categories, which we will get to. Uh, one which was uh, very late on in the race, which we'll get to in a little bit. But, um... Yeah, Satsum Ring is it's a bizarre one because there isn't a lot of uh, places to overtake around here. A lot of it is very one line. Um, turn 1 is a good opportunity to, to try and overtake. Um, downhill into Satsun Curve is another place and also the final corner. Realistically, that's pretty much it. There isn't that many other places where you see much overtaken. Um... I mean, you will get the occasional ones, you know, elsewhere on the track. But realistically, there isn't that many places to overtake. So, um, if you get stuck behind someone, you can lose quite a bit of time. But in Moto3, it was a big train. There was a, a lot of overtaking happening. Um, a lot of people running wide. A lot of people getting um, warnings for extending track limits. There's... Uh, some people who had to do long lap penalties um but yeah it's, it's it was just a crazy race um starting off uh john messiah who was uh, in the leading group he put an overtake on yuki kuni um into the final corner and made a little bit of contact with yuki kuni not a huge amount. I mean, it, it was looking like, you know, the, the door was open, so Messiah went for it. But unfortunately, Yuki Kuni um, just kind of tried to shut the door whilst Messiah was there. And uh, Kuni, unfortunately, went down and out of the race. Messiah stayed on. They then gave Messiah a long lap penalty, which he took. And I tell you what, it was a hell of a long lap penalty. I know that uh, well, we've seen Zarco do a fantastic long lap penalty at Bruno a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, Messia, he, he took the long lap penalty, which is at turn one around here. And uh, although the, the long lap around here, because there aren't really any slow corners per se, I mean, turn one is basically the, the slowest corner. Um, even taking it normally, you're not going to lose three seconds. It's about two, two and a half seconds you lose around here. But Messia just... He, he got it braked perfectly for it. He went in, knee down, full lean, and uh, just managed to, to ride through it really, really quickly. And he only lost 1.2 seconds, which, on a long lap penalty, it's very impressive. Um, yeah, he done really, really well to, to be able to to only lose 1.2 seconds. He did drop him obviously further back through the pack because when the, the group is all all bunched up together, um, 
then you know even losing 1.2 seconds you're going to lose a lot of places so uh, yeah Messia who was in the, the leading group then kind of dropped back to, to the back of the group um, Dennis Fodger was trying his best to get out front um, and when he did he did try pulling the pin a few times but um, the, the rest of the guys wouldn't let him go get away Koto Toba was very very strong on the brakes apparently he, he had actually set his, his bike up to be better on the brakes but um and more, more stable on the brakes but that component kind of um the, the change of the direction um isn't as good um focusing on on the brakes so although he was really good on the brakes and we saw him make some fantastic moves even in, in the final corner he made a fantastic move but I really didn't think he was going to get stopped, but he did, and he got through cleanly. Um, but yeah, it's just change of direction, um, kind of suffers a little bit. But, you know, he'd he done a pretty good job, and uh, he's doing a good job with that team as well, to be fair. Um, Darren Binder, forgot to mention him as well. Um, he got black flagged in qualifying. So in Q1, um, or in qualifying, sorry, he had a collision with another rider which then resulted in himself crashing the other rider stayed on but race direction has uh, had a, had a talk well spoken to, to the motor three riders um, and basically said you know everyone needs to, to calm down a bit um, if people were caught riding irresponsibly that results in a rider crashing they will be punished and even though it was uh, Darren Binder himself who ended up actually crashing, he then got punished for it. He got black flagged in qualifying. So he had to start quite far back in, in, on the grid anyway. Um, he then had a ride through penalty. He, he had practiced the, the ride through and like warm up and that just to see, you know, how much he was going to lose. It's about 20 seconds around here going through. Uh, through, through the pit so you know that that's a lot of time to lose a lot of time to lose so uh, he took that as soon as he could um, and then when he rejoined it was right at the back so um, unfortunate for him but he did start plugging away and uh, he, he did make some uh, some positions up which was good to see um, Adrian Fernandez on the Husqvarna he unfortunately crashed out his teammate Romano Fanati caught up in a couple of incidents um he did actually cause a a bit of a crash um at turn one and uh it, it took a very long time for race direction to actually give Fanati a long lap penalty um it was very very weird um usually you know like Messias, they gave him the, the long lap penalty very, very quickly after he um, had, had the coming together with Yuki Kuni. But for some reason, they took a very, very long time in giving um, Fanati his penalty. Very weird. Um, so he actually ended up taking out... Um, I think it was Messia he, he took out. So Messia did end up going down um no i don't think it was no i'm getting mixed up actually masia he did go down but he clipped the back of um fodger not fodger's fault all fodger was in front of him into turn one uh masia just went in a bit too quick and uh clipped the rear of fodger fodger stayed on which is good but masia went down um but he saw a few few other riders um, crashing as well. Um, we've already mentioned Fernandez. Gabriel Rodrigo, he was in the leading group. He had a, quite a big high side and he ended up crashing out. Philip Salach as well, he unfortunately crashed out. Fellon, um, he ended up crashing out as did Ricardo Rossi, Messia and Stefano Nepa. Um, Dennis Onchu and Yamanaka had a bit, a bit of a coming together. Um, Onchu went down on, on the, the ground. Um, so yeah, anyway, 
Fanati was eventually given the long lap penalty, but before he was given the long lap penalty, there was um, a, another crash at turn one, which uh, Fanati had to then avoid, which put him onto the gravel. So he lost a lot of time. Then he had to do a long lap penalty. So uh, he ended up losing a hell of a lot of time. But um, back at the front, Pedro Acosta was making his way through the pack. He got into the leads, and then um, a few of the riders managed to uh, get back past him. The likes of Toba, Fodja, um, Mino as well was looking pretty good. He managed to get into the, the top group. Um, Sergio Garcia, you may remember he won at Catalonia. He uh, was fighting for that top spot as well. Uh, you had Suzuki there, Artigas as well. John McPhee, he had to take um, avoiding action, unfortunately, a bit earlier on in the race. Um, that was when uh, Fallon had uh, had his crash. Fortunately for John McPhee, he was on the outside and then he had to take avoiding action and ran off track um, so that he, he didn't get caught up in the crash. So uh, he was in the, the leading group, but uh, yeah, he, he unfortunately went... Um, well, lost a load of positions. So, by the end of the day, it was Pedro Acosta who managed to take victory. Judged it to perfection. And, uh, yeah, once he got into the lead towards the end of the race, no one could really do anything. He's just got, you know... Wa watching him on the brakes into Turn 1 was amazing to see. Because the line he was taking, you're always going to think, he's not going to make that. There's no way he's going to get that stopped and turned and hit the apex. But... 99% of the time he did. I mean, there was a few occasions where he did run wide, but when he did run wide, he only lost, like, one position and managed to run other people wide so that he didn't actually lose too many positions. But he did um, did make up a lot of positions into turn one and uh, went on to take the win. Kaito Toba did take uh, second place. Now, Jeremy Alcoba did cross the line in third. However... With two laps to go, going through the waterfall down the hill, he ran onto the green, took advantage, and that is when he managed to make an overtake and get into third position. Um, he was told to drop one position um, on the final lap, which he did not. Um, he actually got into second place and then dropped back down to third. But because he didn't relinquish his original position, which was third, he should have gone back to fourth. Um, they basically done that after the race. Should he have been given a bit of a harsher penalty? Maybe. Because if that had been the final lap, race direction would have hit him with a three-second penalty. Because we've seen it time and time again that on the final lap, if someone goes onto the green, you don't get a warning or a long lap penalty. You get a three-second penalty added to your time at the end. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, Again, a bit of inconsistency from race direction. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. But uh, Dennis Fodger did actually take third place after Alcoba being given that penalty. Um, so Alcoba finished in fourth. Andrea Migno came home in fifth. With Antonelli in sixth. Sergio Garcia in seventh place. Suzuki was eighth. Artigas was ninth. Uh, Gravera was tenth. John McPhee recovered to eleventh place. Bartolini was 12th. Romano Fanati ended up in 13th place. Darren Binder, remember he had that ride through penalty, ended up in 14th place and gained two points. And the last point scorer was uh, Is Die Hart. So he gets uh, the last point in 15th. Then you had Dennis on two in 16th. Um, Kelso in 17th. And Yamanaka in 18th. So a very, very hectic moto three race but the championship now it's uh yeah it's opened up again with pedro acosta winning that race he's now got 55 points over sergio garcia uh, joan messia is in third but he's now 73 points behind and then you've got nicolo antonelli in fourth place he's actually moved up three positions uh, he's uh on 65 points 80 points behind fanati has dropped down to fifth he's on 64 points Fodger has moved up four places to six. He's 61 points behind. Darren Bender is seventh. He's 60 on 60 points, which is 85 points behind. 
Andre Mino is 8th, 87 points behind, and Sasaki is in 9th, 88 points behind. So it's looking uh, very ominous for Pedro Acosta and uh, his championship at the moment. Right then, so from Moto3 over to Moto2 and uh, the IO KTM squad, they've looked good all weekend. They've been very, very strong. And uh, from the get-go, they went first and second with Ralph Fernandez taking the initial lead from his teammate and championship leader, uh, Remy Gardner, in second place. Uh, Bezeki and Canet had good starts as well, as did Digi Antonio. Sam Lowe's not a good start, not a good qualifying. I um, think he started in about 7th place and by the, the end of lap 1 he was down in like 14th place. Uh, Jake Dixon had a good start and managed to get inside the top 10 um, off the line. So, Moto2. Like I said, Fernandez took the initial lead from his teammate Gardner, but Gardner didn't waste too much time in getting past his teammate and hitting the front and uh, basically staying there. Um, Simone Corsi had quite a weird crash on the first lap with his MV Augusta. Um, the bike just actually absolutely trashed itself, went end over end, and it looked like it was just tumbling for an eternity. It wasn't like a, a massively quick crash, but the bike just got hooked up and uh, took a massive, massive tumble. Um, so, so many course he did not finish the first lap. Um, one of the standing riders, um, Audi Gear, if that's how you pronounce his name, probably not. Um, he ended up crashing out of the uh, of the race very early on. And Ralph Fernandez, the rookie, he tried to uh, stick with his teammate uh, Remy Gardner, but into the Omega. He uh, unfortunately lost the front and down he went. So the rookie was out. And obviously that takes a, a massive hit on his uh, championship um, with his teammate out front. And uh, there, there has been a lot of talks for Moto2 and their front tyres. Um, their, their front tyres around here at Satsa Ring going off pretty quick. And the feeling not being that good. Um, so we saw quite a few front end crashes. Um... Lorenzo Baldessari, the other MV Augusta, he ended up crashing out a bit later on. Um, but yeah, Remy Gardner, once uh, his teammate Fernandez had crashed out, then it was it was Gardner's race. He was just able to, to set a blistering pace and no one could get anywhere near him. Aaron Cannett in second place. He managed to just get down and, uh, you know, get on with his, his own race and uh, take a, a, a good... Good, good race by it. Canet, Canet standards. Um, we know that Canet has been good in Moto 2. Even his rookie season, he was very impressive. But um, kind of struggled a little bit um, towards the end of last year and definitely the start of this year. But um, showing much better promise this time. Digi Antonio and Bezeki were fighting for quite a lot of the race. Um, Sam Lowe's, he was doing his best to make his way back through the pack after making a horrible start and uh, just being patient this time with uh, picking his overtakes and not trying to rush too too much like I said Jake Dixon was in good uh, a good position inside the top 10 he was in good company just behind uh, Augusto Fernandez but into the final corner um, Jake went for an overtake and uh, yeah I mean the door was open but unfortunately a bit like what happened with Messiah in Moto3. Um, actually, I think it's down into Saxon Curve. That, uh, yeah, Jake dived to the inside and uh, Augusto Fernandez just cut across him and Jake clipped the rear of Fernandez, but this time it was Fernandez who went down. Um, Jake had to take avoid in action and he ended up going into the gravel. Um, because of the contact and unfortunately um, that was pretty much Jake's race over it was certainly Augusto Fernandez's race over um, so so not good for him um, but yeah that, that put Jake outside of the uh, the, the points and uh, quite far back 
So we had uh, Lorenzo Dallaporta. He had a mechanical issue, which was uh, very rare to see for Moto2. So he, uh, yeah, had to retire with a mechanical aboard his Etel Trans Calex machine. Um, Bozzecki managed to uh, regain third place off of Digi Antonio. And uh, when he did get back pass, that was pretty much it for Digi. Uh, Bozzecki just managed to, uh, to hold him off. Digi did try again to overtake him. But uh, down into Saxon curve, but he did outbreak himself, went wide, and that allowed Bezeki to have a bit of a buffer back to uh, to um, Digi, and uh, we, we nearly saw Jorge Navarro get um, Digi, but not quite. A bit further back, you had Bo Ben Snyder battling with Alonso Lopez and Barry Boltus. Um, Albert Reynas was having a pretty good race as well, a bit further up. Cameron Bobier was inside the top 10. Um, Sam Lowe's was just picking people off, you know, one by one, as and when he could, um, and got inside the top 10, and then was getting a bit further up, up to about 8th, 7th uh, place. And then all chaos, chaos ensued on the final lap with... Uh, the front tyres of a few people just completely given out. Um, into turn one, we unfortunately lost Xavi Vieje, who was in a very strong position um, in the race. He was well inside the top five. And unfortunately, on the final lap into turn one, his front gave way and down he went. And then a few seconds later, Ayagura's front went down as well. Um, so Ayagura, who again was inside the top 10 and running pretty strongly, um, his race was over. And Joe Roberts as well, he unfortunately ended up going out on the final lap as well. And Joe, he was, I think he was in 10th place at the time. Um, he has said that he doesn't like Satsum Ring, um, so he's just looking forward to getting through it. But uh, unfortunately, on the final lap, he, he went down. So we had three riders go down on the final lap. Sam Lowe's then because of that was up to 6th place just behind Marcel Schrotter and then Sam did manage to make an overtake on Schrotter to claim 5th place so Remy Garner went on to take an impressive win from uh, Aaron Kanet in 2nd place and Marco Bezzecchi in 3rd Digi Antonio took 4th from Sam Lowe's in 6th Marcel Schrotter was uh, uh, sorry Sam Lowe's in 5th Marcel Schrotter in 6th Jorge Navarro in 7th, Albert Arenas 8th, good one for the rookie. Marcos Ramirez was 9th, uh, Cameron Bobier 10th place, uh, Bulliger was 11th, Alonso Lopez was 12th, Bo Ben Snyder is in 13th, Barry Bolter's 14th and the last point scoring position went to Vietti in 15th. And then a bit further back in 16th place we had Tony Arbolino um, from... Hafish Sirin in 17th. Chantra was in 18th. He actually ran on at Turn 1 a bit earlier on in the race. And uh, yeah, lost a load of positions when he was trudging through the gravel. Thomas Luti not having a good run in 19th place. Manzi in 20th. And Jake Dixon after having that um, collision with Augusto Fernandez. He ended up in 21st position. So only 21 riders finished. And yeah... A bit of a uh, crazy Moto2 race, uh, not in terms of the, of the leaders or, or the podium even, but, you know, mid-pack and especially that final lap, it was, uh, yeah, a lot of people going down. And, um, yeah, I'll tell you what, though, it's, it's amazing how just changing teams can really affect a rider. Um, Remy Gardner, obviously, we've seen last year... He was putting in some strong performances, and even the year before. But um, obviously, the, the, the switch to uh, the Aki Ayo Red Bull KTM team has really stepped up a, another level for him in uh, Moto2. And uh, yeah, Remy Gardner, he is on the form of his life at the moment. So um, yeah, fantastic to see the Australian backing up um, with his results with another win. In terms of the championship for Moto2, Remy Garner leads. He's got quite a nice lead over his teammate now, Fernandez in second place. Uh, he's got 36 points over Fernandez, so Remy Garner on 164 points. 
Raul Fernandez on 128. Marco Bezzecchi in third on 117, so he's 47 points behind. Uh, Sam Lowe's in fourth on 86, he's 78 points behind. Pretty much out of the championship now as Lowe's. Digi Antonio in fifth on 73 points, he's 91 points behind. And you got Marcel Schrotter in sixth, he's on 59 points. 105 points behind. Then you've got Aaron Cannett. He's up three places to seven. He's on 55 points. He's 109 points behind. Jay Roberts is down two places to eight. On 50 points, he's 114 points behind. And Xavi Vieje has dropped down to ninth place. He's on 42 points, 122 behind. So that was Moto2. That's the championship. Now then, Moto GP. Could the King of the Ring, Mark Marquez, retain his throne at the Saxon Ring? He hasn't been beaten here ever in the MotoGP category. And uh, yeah, obviously he, he had a, a pretty decent qualifying in fifth place. Yamaha struggling dramatically here at Saxon Ring. And when I mean dramatically, you had Fabio Quattararo who took pole position. Um, no, you didn't. You had Fabio Quattararo who took second place. Um, and then you had the other Yamahas didn't even make it through to Q2. So, very, very weird what was going on with Yamaha, but we'll talk about them a little bit later on. So, off the start, I mean... It was Zarco who was on pole, but he didn't actually get the best of starts by a Ducati standards. I mean, we know that, that the, the Yamahas can get off the line now with their, their launch device on the front and rear of the bike now. Um, and we know that the Ducati can get good starts, but they need a bit of a run down to turn one. And around here, there isn't a long run down to turn one, so, you know... They didn't manage to get into their stride. So uh, into turn one. It was the Aprilia of Alicia Spargaro who led. He got a fantastic start. Dived up the inside of everyone. And uh, led into turn one. Mark Marquez from the second row of the grid as well. He managed to sneak through into second place. Um, managed to get up the inside of Fabio Quattararo. And uh, Fabio sat up a little bit. And yeah, Mark was uh, up to second place straight away. So, you had uh, Elise looking like he was going to lead his first ever lap around, uh, well, ever. But into the final corner, Marquez went up the inside and, uh, yeah, managed to deny Alicia Spargo from leading a whole lap in MotoGP. Um, but I'll tell you what. Hats off to Elise. He, he didn't give it up easily. Um, over the next couple of laps, he did check, exchange places with Mark a couple more times. Down into Saxon Curve, Elise managed to get a really good run through the waterfall, down the hill. Outbraked Marquez into Saxon Curve. Got the bike stopped, but then again into the final corner, Marquez managed to just shove up the inside and regain the lead. So uh, Elise managed to relinquish the the lead again for about a corner and then Marquez would take it straight back again Fabio was uh, doing his best to try and hold on to uh, where he was inside the top five but uh, he had the Ducatis of Jack Miller uh, Zarco to try and contend with uh, Miguel Oliveira as well he uh, had a good start and was making his way through uh, through the pack uh, quite early on in the race, you had a coming together between Alex Marquez and Danilo Petrucci down into Turn 1. Um, Petrucci, he uh, <laughs> he did swear at uh, Bastianini in, uh, in Q1. Um, there, there was a lot of stuff happening in qualifying in MotoGP, not just in Q1, but Q2 as well. But it was only Bastianini who actually got the, the penalty of uh, losing three grid positions off the start. Um, we got put back three grid positions, which... Yeah, he, he did get in the way of Petrucci. Um, 
But in Q2, there was a lot of people just completely dawdling. Miguel Oliveira nearly completely stopped to try and let people pass. And it's just like, what are they doing? I mean, Moto3 are a nightmare for it. And now MotoGP riders are starting doing it. And obviously, it doesn't set a good example for Moto3, who were the worst at doing it in the first place. So, yeah. Maybe a few more riders should have had penalties as well, but it was only the Beast who actually ended up with one. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was uh, Alex Marquez and Petrucci had it coming together into Turn 1. They both went down. And, uh, in fact, Petrucci's bike was laying on top of Alex's bike. Um, it did look like it was more Alex's fault than Petrucci's, but it was just one of those things, unfortunately. Um, just a racing incident, and uh, that was that. Petrucci uh, throwing some um, gestures again, but yeah, it wasn't the middle finger this time. Um, and then a lap later, Lorenzo Salvadori had a very bizarre crash. Um, a, a, a corner you don't really see a lot of people crashing. Um, but yeah, just completely lost the front of his Aprilia and uh, down he went. And it wasn't long before the white flag started waving, which signals that riders can come in to change bikes. Um, obviously, most races uh, are flag to flag. And uh, yeah, the, the white flag was uh, waving to say that riders can now come in to change bikes if they so wish. Because rain had started falling. So the other flags were out on track. The white flags with the red cross, which... Uh, signals that rain is uh, falling at that specific corner and Marquez decided to use that to his advantage we know how good Marquez is in mixed conditions he basically stayed on the same pace maybe just increased it a little bit but Alicia Spargo who was in second place at the moment um, he kind of uh, back way well, he, he did back off quite a bit um, and that was holding other riders up because uh, they couldn't get past him. Like I said, Saxon Ring isn't the easiest of places to overtake. And that allowed Marquez to then open a gap over a second uh, within a lap. And then you started to see riders get past um, Alicia Spargro. You had the likes of uh, Jack Miller come through. Miguel Oliveira as well managed to come through into third. And... Uh, yeah, you could see as soon as they got past Elish, they were able to, to, to pull away from him pretty quickly. Um, but the, the rain didn't last for very long. Um, it was forecast that if it did rain, it was going to rain quite um, heavily. But it wasn't anything special really. Bit of a shower. It didn't really cause the track to get wet at all. And uh, the, the race continued. Miguel Oliveira managed to get past Jack Miller into second place um, and then the hunt started for Oliveira to try and close down Mark Marquez who had a gap of it was about two seconds at the time a bit further back it was absolute misery for um, most Yamahas I say most Yamahas because Fabio Quattararo started his ma making his way back through the pack um, he managed to get back up to uh, fourth place and then he managed to get the better of Jack Miller a bit later on in the race up to third for Vinales who uh, started last he was still in last in the race Frank and Morbidelli was second last in the race Rossi was inside the points but only just so yeah not looking good for Yamaha at the moment um Vinales did manage to uh, make a few places up, but then he dropped back, which was uh, very, very bizarre to see. Um, back at the front, Miguel Oliveira managed to get the gap back down to... He managed to get it back to 0.9 of a second towards the end of the race, with about five laps to go. It was looking like Marquez was just starting to uh, fatigue a little bit, and the... The right-hand side of his rear tyre was looking very marked up, considering there's only three right-handers around here. Obviously, they do have uh, asymmetric tyres uh, with a much softer compound on the right-hand side because, obviously, there's only three uh, right-handers around here. So, um, yeah, but that soft compound on the right-hand side was starting to mark up for Mark. Um, Miguel Oliveira was closing in, but 
Mark managed to dig deep and uh, managed to open up the gap again. Where I think, uh, you know, with uh, two laps to go, Oliveira saw that he wasn't going to be able to catch Mark quick enough. Um, and the gap had kind of stabilised. It's still around a second by then anyway. So I think uh, Oliveira settled for second place. Um, and yeah, Mark Marquez... King of the ring, he holds on to his crown and hats off to him. Fair play after all the injury and suffering he's done recently. Um, he's back on winning ways, so great to see him come back. We don't want to see um, great riders uh, be injured and then just fade, so it's great to see him win again. Um, I think he might have... Um, a bit more difficult at Assen just because of the, the nature of that track. Um, a lot of fast change of directions. Obviously, you've got that chicane at the end as well. Um, and a lot more right-handers. But, you know, we know Marquez goes well around Saxon Ring. And uh, he pulled out of the bag again. And, you know, if he's still not 100% fit, which he isn't, he still managed to beat everyone when he's not fully fit around Saxon Ring. So... People need to step up their game around Saxon Ring if they ever want to take that title away from uh, Marquez, the king of the ring. But fantastic race again from Miguel Oliveri. He's had a crack in three races now. Um, so here came home in second place. Fabio Quattararo, good race from him. Good recovery to third position. Um, a good race from Brad Binder as well. He got fourth place. Uh, Peko Bagnaia was fifth, just ahead of his teammate Jack Miller in sixth. Alicia Spargo in 7th place. Unfortunately, didn't get his best result with Aprilia so far. Despite getting um, a front row start with Aprilia. And uh, leading briefly within this race. Um, Zarco, not a great race from him. By his standards, ended up in 8th place. Duran Mir was ninth. Paula Spargo was 10th. Alex Rins was 11th. Jorge Martin was 12th. Tagami Nakagami in 13th. Valentino Rossi was 14th. And his brother Luca Marini took home the last point in 15th place. Then you had Bastianini in 16th place. Ika Laquona was 17th. And then Franco Morbidelli 18th. And Maverick Vinales in 19th place. Yamahas, they're struggling. And. Uh, yeah, Vinales was uh, complaining again about lack of rear grip spinning up. Uh, Franco Morbidelli said that Quattararo, his lines that he takes, really suits the Yamaha. And, um, you know, he's making it work. But the rest of them, they just can't seem to get it to work. They're, they're, they're not getting the rear grip that they need. Um, and Vinales getting frustrated behind the two Ducatis of Luca Marini and Bastianini because he was saying... He's faster than them through the corners, but he couldn't get past. And as soon as they got to a place where you can pass around here, he managed to use the strengths of the Ducati, and he couldn't overtake them. So, uh, yeah. And uh, apparently he's, he's been saying some, uh, yeah, not so favourable things about Yamaha at the moment. Um, saying that they're being disrespectful. Um, and yeah, it's... Yeah, something needs to change within Yamaha. We know that Quattararo can ride it. His riding style seems to suit the Yamaha. Um, but the other guys around here anyway, they were nowhere near it. So, Mark Marquez is back on winning ways. Which, like I said, is good to see after all the struggles that he's had in operations and everything. Um, it is good to see him back on, uh, on, on winning ways. Um... But yeah, championship-wise now, Quattararo, he uh, actually st extended his lead a little bit over Zarco. Um, so Quattararo on 131 points, Zarco on 109, 22 points behind. Jack Miller on 100 points in third, he's 31 points behind. Then you've got Bangyaya one more point behind um, Miller. So Bangyaya in fourth on 99 points, he's 32 points behind. Duran Mir in 5th uh, place on 85 points. He's 46 points behind. Maverick Vinales in 6th. He's on 75 points. He's 56 points behind. Miguel Oliveira in 7th. He's set on 74 points. 
57 behind. Brad Binder moves up to 8th on 56 points. 75 points behind and Alicia Spargo in 9th. He's dropped down to 9th on 53 points. 78 points behind. So, uh, despite, um, well, Quattararo, he, he was happy with uh, third place because we knew that he, he was struggling a little bit. Um, but yeah, that was MotoGP at Saxon Ring. The next one will be at Aston, which I will use Mark Marquez for. And yeah, that's it from me, guys. He didn't actually finish this race for me, which is very bizarre to see. Um, but yeah, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more content. I shall see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe. Watch your hands. Look after yourselves. I'll see you guys next time. See you.